all right the next one to start with is uh, the pipe the pipe is one of the most simplest ipc mechanisms that is available in the market anybody can use pipe it is so easily constructible there will not be any hindrance for the user to use it if you are very familiar with the way we have used fork there will not be any problem for you to get yourself attached to the piping as i already conveyed you the pipe is going to be used within the same file that is the related processes a pipe can be used between the parent process and the child process alone it cannot be used between two different processes at any time i mean to say the pipe again is usable only between the related processes it is very important for someone to see the code as i normally used to say before we proceed to execution gedit is the editor i prefer all the times and i have opened the complete code snippet now so please go through this comments that i have written this comments is the explanation that i have given for the complete code and i strongly advise you to follow this methodology to include comments in the code whatever whichever code you write any time in future now you come here as i already instructed you you can find the list of header files supported for inclusion of the fork and pipe i told you there are two important things to be used for pipe to be constructed one is the pipe system called itself and second within whom you are going to use the pipe it is going to be within the related processes so how will you construct two related processes through the fork the fork will give birth to the parent process as well as a fork will give birth to the child process from the parent process and we there we get two processes and between these two processes it is easy for someone to insert the pipe for establishing the communication now let's walk through the code i create an array of two integers and then i create an integer i i get an integer ready for collecting the return value by name red so what is the content that i am going to pass from the source to destination that is from the parent to child through the pipe it should be kept in the buffer so i have a buffer ready where i am going to keep the data in so the next successful step should be creation of the pipe pipe by passing the pipe fd this one is the argument now now i am passing the argument i that is an integer of two arrays uh, an array of two integers is now passed into the pipe and the pipe will be created after this step i have the pipe ready now and the pipe will have two ends one end is called as the read end and the other one end is called as the write end as i have instructed you already everything is file in linux so the read end is a file and write end is a file also and then both of the ends will be represented by a file descriptor it is fdf0 and fdf1 for me then i have to use the pipe successfully between two related processes so how will i use it i need to have fork called now this fork will create a child process out of the current process now and we have already explained the complete working methodology of the fork which means it will have two return values the first return value will be greater than 0 which is it is the parent process and then the next one will be equal to 0 which is it is the child process now i'm getting into the parent process cycle first i use a keyword here called as f flush of std in which will flush the standard input i am cleaning the standard input files here i might have some data in the buffer input buffer so i have to clear it before i use everything and then just to confirm i am printing i am parent now write is a system call that i need to use to check the functionality of the writing into the right end of the pipe so the right end of the pipe is represented by a file descriptor called as pipe ft of 1 we have already told you we have instructed you very clearly that everything is a file in linux and here we get another file by name fd of 1 pipe fd of 1 which represents the right end of the pipe so the next step the next subsequent step of our use to see is you will have to close this and what are we going to write into the pipe end? what are we going to write into the right end of the pipe is more important i am going to write hello mr shriram and i need to say how many characters do i write into the buffer so i am writing about 15 characters into the buffer into the pipe actually uh, through the pipe fd of 1 this is what i have conveyed you clearly now you need to understand that there is a pipe available in front of you and in the pipe there is a write end and in the write end you are going to write the data hello mr shriram it is of length 15 characters now the writing part is done so i am closing the loop now comes the reading part i will go to the the parent has you should take it like this the parent has deposited the money in the bank now the child can retrieve the money out from the bank that is what i am trying to explain you now 
This part of code is very simple where I am making my child sleep for about 5 seconds until the parent writes the content. Now once it is written, I am just printing, I am the child just to make sure the end user could understand what I am working with and then I need to go to the read end of the pipe now. So where are we reading? A read end of the pipe. A read end is represented by the pipe FT of 0. There the right end, right end is represented by pipe FT of 1. Here it is represented by pipe FT of 0. So now what are we writing the data into? We are reading the data from the right end and we are writing it onto the buffer. Which means I have read something from the book I am writing into the brain. But you need to put it back onto the screen for the end user to see. So how will I do it? Write here, write one buffer, size of buffer. Why did I use one here? During the file descriptor description, I have conveyed you that standard input is always represented by 0, standard output is represented by 1. So the monitor is represented by 1 here and the content is taken from the buffer and then the size of the buffer is presented. It is as good as I am taking the data from the right end, reading it into the read end and then copying it into the buffer and finally I am writing it onto the display. It is very simple and where did I use pipe now? I have used the pipe between two related processes that is the parent process followed by the child process. It is a very simple flow. If you had understood clearly with the forking, you will have more trouble in understanding this. Now my duty is to go through the example of, go through the running execution part of this code, which will get you a clear understanding. So my file is in desktop. I am going to the code part and then we will see it in a second. CD complete this. First is the folder name. So here I have the pipe gcc o pipe.c pipe I have no mistakes here absolutely so dot slash pipe so I am parent the parent is getting executed first and after 5 seconds you have got the data out on the screen which means the child has got executed along with the data that has been sent by the parent the parent has got executed first it has written the content onto the buffer then the content it has written the content onto the right end then the content has been retrieved from the right end onto the buffer then onto the screen by the child so the flow is like first the parent will execute itself and then the child will get it get itself executed after the sleep time that we have specified it is very easy and very important for someone to know how the pipe works because this is simplest of all the mechanisms available in the IPCs and it is very efficient mechanism also.